Hey, 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 Nikki Brown here. No matter where you are and what part of the world you're in, I hope that you're having a good day. I'm going to make this kind of quick because I had to turn the air off and I have the sweater on, so that's not going to work for me in hot Atlanta weather. Anywho, anywho, I was watching a video um, yesterday. Um, the person was a coach and basically said basically said they had a client who um, a female client who had um, within the first year and I did a video about this the other day something similar client who had um Oh, it was a matchmaker. It was a female matchmaker, actually. It wasn't a guy. It was, um... Oh, I can't think of her name right now. But she's a former matchmaker and a life coach. And, um... When I, when I think of her name, I'm going to go back in my history and watch the video again. I'll post it in the description box. Anyway, she had a female client who pretty much knew within the first year that she did not want to be with this guy, right? But out of guilt or shame, and that guilt could be that maybe she felt like she was using him. It could have been guilt coming from her family, pressuring her to get married by a certain age and have children and all of that kind of stuff. Um, or feeling like she wasted his time so she might as well continue on. Well, anyway, they had a trip planned, she said. Lynn Pope, whatever. Uh, I think that's her name, the, the life coach. Lynn Pope. Something Lynn Pope, I think, is her name. Anyhow, the client, um, within the first year, knew she basically didn't want to be with this guy. But they had a trip planned, so she didn't want to break up with him before the trip. So she went on ahead and went on the trip. And on the trip, he ended up proposing. And 10 years, and I think two kids later, she finally met somebody that she really had a connection with and wanted to be with. And I don't know if she was torn between making a decision to stay or if she ended up cheating or if she just left him. I can't remember the end of the story, but in any event... There are a lot of people in that situation, right? Where they settle for somebody they, they did not really like and did not really want to be with. They knew there was no connection. They knew there was no chemistry. And years later, whether it be seven years later, 10 years later, 15, 20, 25, or more, Sometimes they don't say anything and they just live a miserable life with this person that they're unhappy with. And I've heard somebody say, well, relationships aren't supposed to be happy. You're right. They're supposed to be healthy, though. They are not supposed to be just stay just because we agreed to stay. I think that's the craziest thing in the world. And to each his or her own, that is just my opinion. I have a right to it. And if you disagree, you have a right to disagree. And I have a right to, you know, still feel the way that I feel. Right? <clears throat> I think it's very unfortunate to people for people to stay in unhappy, unhealthy situations. Because the kids see this. And so the kids typically go on to have unhealthy relationships as well. If there are children involved. If it's just a matter of money um and you know some people sometimes those people decide they're both gonna cheat and they just live their separate lives and call themselves having an open relationship and they just make it work however they make it work um but for those who stay and actually don't do anything a lot of times they end up with some very serious health problems because mentally they're messing themselves up mentally and emotionally and the body keeps the score right so the body knows that you are miserable it is it's it, it, it it's about having a healthy relationship and having a miserable relationship is not healthy for the body it's not healthy in the mind and I don't agree with just settle just to settle knowing that you're not 
you don't like this person right a lot of times people say oh well you should date so-and-so because so-and-so has money I could care less what does that mean they have money they have property they have this kind of car who cares I don't what else does that person have what what how do you know what's their communication like And I hear a lot of times people say, oh, well, um, a man doesn't care about what a woman has, but some women don't care about what a man has. And some people feel like she should. Right? But some some of us, everybody's different, right? Some people are, what, are considered sapiosexuals. You have to stimulate the mind before anything else can be stimulated. So coming with your accolades or accomplishments means absolutely nothing to some people, male or female. Now, if you have good conversation, you can stimulate the mind and you have, you know, um, achievements in, you know, income and, you know, you have value to add, then that's great. But there are there are losers in every tax bracket. Some people don't want to date losers. Some people don't want to date someone who does not have any ambition, any goals, any purpose. Right? Some people don't want that. And so regardless of how much money they make or whatever other assets they have, they can still be a loser. And some people don't want to end up with a loser. And again, losers in every tax bracket. Just like a high value man can be in every tax bracket. It doesn't necessarily mean that he makes over a certain amount of money. I don't know if I can take this anymore. Anyway, it's hot and I just wanted to say that. Um, everybody's different so what 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 people are looking for male or female is different <clears throat> it's not even about money money is paper money doesn't really mean anything anyway and spiritually if somebody's spiritual they understand that and so again for some people it's not about the money sure it gives you options right but at the end of the day on your um in your obituary, it's not going to say anything about how much money you had. And if it do, that seems like a very shallow obituary. It's going to talk about your children, your grandchildren. It will talk about what you've accomplished in life. It will mention that. It will mention your other relatives who have preceded or, you know, preceded you in life. But it's not going to say, oh, this person had $1.5 million in the bank. It's not going to say that. It's not going to say that at all. Not at all. It's not going to say that. <laughs> it's not. Whatever, cars, homes, you can't take any of that stuff with you. It's not going in the ground. And hopefully you have a, uh, a trust, a... Um, estate plan and a will so that you're leaving whatever to whoever that you want. You're leaving your legacy to those you know who you feel like need it or deserve it. Or just because you want them to have it. But outside of that, obituaries talk about perhaps if you went to the military you earned a certain degree and your children and grandchildren your spouses and other relatives it doesn't say anything about money because that's not what's important I hope that this conversation was helpful as always if you would like to talk about it further I am always here and open for discussion don't forget to like comment share and subscribe and Share your thoughts, even if you disagree. It doesn't bother me. 
a lot of I see a lot of times people try to post things in the comments I guess trying to push my buttons or provoke me I don't care you can say what you like you can disagree I don't care <laughs> all I'm gonna do is laugh or say thank you for your feedback that's on you that has nothing to do with me if you choose to be sarcastic or condescending or whatever name you choose to call me that I, I could care less I could care absolute less 